Crazy Crab in the house, and today I'm going to give my top five worst films of 2018. Obviously, I haven't seen every film. I avoided films like The Nutcracker, A Wrinkle in Time. From what I've heard, I just decided not to waste my time on some of these films. I can't really put them on my list. I can't really comment. There is a movie, though, that I have seen that I wanted to comment on because it actually has a 0% on Rotten Tomatoes and was obliterated by critics and audiences, but I actually enjoyed it. I don't know what went wrong, but for some reason, Gotti with John Travolta, I did not know this was like universally hated when I watched it. I just know I had a good time with it. When I watched it, I thought it was all right. I thought Travolta was really good. It grabbed my attention. I was into it. It's not perfect. There was like jumping around in time that I didn't think worked as effectively as say like Pulp Fiction. The editing was, you know, not great, but all in all, I enjoyed Gotti. So 0% or not, it did not make my list. Nor did Solo, a Star Wars story, which I have to mention as a huge Star Wars fan, or at least I used to be, but Solo, I thought was like a big fan service comic book type story thrown on the big screen. It did have potential early for an actual story that could have been really awesome, but they went in a different direction. It ended up showing basically Han Solo with the exact same character arc he had in A New Hope with a bunch of references thrown into the original films. There's Easter eggs all over. A little look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, look at us from A New Hope. And then you got Darth Maul showing up. No rhyme or reason or sense behind why he's there other than to show us Darth Maul. So we go, oh, Darth Maul. But, you know, it was just disappointing. But I did enjoy the first 30 minutes or so. And there was a lot of cool scenes. Honestly, I, I couldn't put it as one of my five worst films. Probably not even one of my ten worst films. But nevertheless, I just wanted to throw that as a dishonorable mention. But it's not one of the five worst. So let's get to the bad ones now. Well, since the 0% Rotten Tomatoes Gotti is not one of my worst movies... It's only appropriate that the 100% Leave No Trace is. This is a film you may never have heard of. And I watched this because I was captivated by the trailer. And I thought, okay, this is a film about a father and a daughter. They live out in the woods. They don't have like a traditional house with four walls and a refrigerator. They instead just kind of camp out and live more or less happily out in the woods in a like a public park or something until social services finds them, they get involved, they kind of mess up their way of life, they convince the girl, they try to convince the girl that he's a bad father, they say, hey, you know, he doesn't even give you a home, she's like, we do have a home, so it sounded really interesting to me, I was like, okay, this is pretty interesting, and it got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, let me check this out, and it did start out pretty interesting, and unfortunately, nothing really happens in this movie, it's a bit plotless, they do move into a house. They're forced to move into a house for a while. And I'm going to kind of... Uh, this will be the only movie. There will be some spoilers in here. I'm just letting you know. Because I don't think anyone's going to watch it if you haven't already seen it. But other than that, there won't be spoilers in this video. But uh, things seem to be going fine in the house. The dad's not happy. I guess he's suffering from PTSD. So that's what kind of this is about, I think, in, the, in a way. But I really don't know what it's about. Because like I said, there's not really... Nothing really happens. They go to the house... He's like, at one point, screw this, we're going back out to the forest. They go back out there, it's freezing, the daughter's like about to die. Then they end up with some country folk singing Kumbaya or something. And there's like bees involved. Like a lady shows the girl how to how to deal with bees, how to handle bees without getting stung. And then uh, uh, later on, she actually starts doing it by herself without that lady. So I'm like, oh crap, something's about to go down. Like she's going to get stung or something. I don't. I hope not, like in My Girl, but nothing happened. And this happens a lot. Like they set up something where it seems like something's going to happen and nothing happens, which I guess is okay once or twice, but nothing ever happened. That's what it, this movie, <laughs> nothing happens. It's just slow. It's kind of boring and nothing happens. The girl was a really good actress. She's probably going places. I, I thought that she was great. The critics can say amazing, breathtaking. I mean, yes, I mean, it was, it was, it was okay at times. There was some emotion, but it, it, overall... It was kind of like watching real life, like go find a family or find a house somewhere and just observe. It's going to be kind of boring. You know, most of the time, nothing really happens. There might be an argument, something like, oh, what's going on here? A little bit of drama? Nah, it's over now. Nothing really happens. Not the worst movie ever, but not very good. Next up, we have Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, a dumb 
movie that had every resource in the world available to them to make something truly epic, and they failed big time, as big budget films often do. This is total garbage. They decide that the best plot device to keep the story going was to have our heroes try to rescue the dinosaurs from an island, save the dinosaurs because a volcano is going to go off on the island, a volcano that is magically now there on the island, even though in the previous movie they built a giant theme park right there. So obviously I don't think they would have built a theme park right on a volcano that could potentially erupt at any time. But, okay, they want to save the dinosaurs. Now, these people, our heroes, want to save the dinosaurs, save the animals, even though those animals are going to eat us all and kill us all. We must save them. That's the plot. The details are dumb. The dialogue is painful. The movie sucks. It's horrible. I hated it. Way worse than the previous one. My brother and I went to see this thinking this would be a fun movie to make fun of. It's going to be some it's going to be dumb, but one second, I'm sorry, my dinner's ready. Oh. 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 Mmm, spicy. Okay. <clears throat> There'll be some popcorn dinosaur entertainment. It wasn't even that. It was just stupid. Really bad. The ending was awful. You know, and I talked earlier about why saving the dinosaurs doesn't make sense. I mean, they even acknowledge in the film that it's probably best just to let the volcano go off and unfortunately the dinosaurs are going to die, but it's fixing our mistake. I mean, it was very clear even in the movie that that is probably best. And I think most people watching thought, okay, that does make sense. I mean, it's sad for the dinosaurs, but if we let them survive and continue to live on this earth with us, we are going to be consumed. So, like, literally, they're going to eat us and we're going to all die. So, I think that the plot idea was, was, was just idiotic, but that's not it. I mean, just the whole movie's dumb. It's just dumb. Uh, if you haven't seen it, don't bother. It's stupid. Um, I mean, you yeah, if you take your like maybe your two-year-old to see it, you know, if your two-year-old watches it at home or something, yeah, they may like it because you know if they're three, mm, now you're pushing it. I doubt it unless it's a real dumb three-year-old. So let's move on. Next we have the Nun. This was a bad year for horror. A lot of dumb horror films. Now Halloween was okay. I don't know if it'll make my top five favorites, but even that one had some dumb moments. But it ain't no, it ain't got nothing on the Nun. The Nun was nothing but dumb. Cliché scares after cliché scare, the jump scares. It's not scary at all in reality. It does what every other horror film has ever done except not as good. It's completely illogical. It takes place in the universe of The Conjuring, like another franchise. And The Conjuring's movies are, are not bad, but The Nun was... It looked creepy. Like the poster, it looked cool. It looked sick, man. And it had James Wan was working on it, and he usually does everything he had with his name on it is awesome. But he was not the director on this, and it shows, because this movie, too cliche. Like, it could have been good. It really could have, but it, it... Like, in no universe does some creepy thing jump out and scare you every five seconds and ends up being nothing. I'm not saying it never happens. Like, you walk around, and go, oh, something scares you. No, but not every five seconds like it's so in your face and it's not scary and it never scares you and you know we learned about jump scares back in the early 80s with friday the 13th okay part three okay it doesn't work anymore especially 50 times in the same movie so and the story whatever it is i guess some a nun had committed suicide and for some reason they need to find out why and that's why they go to this creepy place i don't really remember i just know it sucked it sucked bad don't watch it next we have first purge I should have known this would be crap because I didn't even like the original Purge. Like anytime the original film in a franchise sucks, the rest of them probably really suck because usually sequels get kind of worse and worse as they phone it in more and more. The first Purge movie was garbage. I thought it was an insult to anybody with a brain. I mean, I thought it sucked. And people would tell me, man, yeah, the original movie does suck, man, but the other ones are better. The sequels, especially the new one, the prequel... Uh, the first purge you got, it's it's way better. It's way better, it's way better, it's way better. So the prequel is the newest one, and this shows how the purge got started in the first place. So, okay, intriguing enough, let's check it out. Not scary, nonsensical, 
not well written. It's supposed to take place in like the early 90s because it's like a prequel. It looks like modern. It doesn't even look like modern times. It looks like the future. You got drones and crazy technology and modern references to Trump. Yes. And how bad Trump is. Because everyone has to shove their political agenda in films. Because I guess they're so into politics, they can't just do their job and make a movie. They can't do that. They have to shove their politics in there. Like, who else does that? My mailman doesn't knock on my door to tell me how bad Trump is. He just delivers my freaking mail. Make movies. Cool movies. Cool scripts. Cool characters. I don't care about your politics. I don't care about Trump. Love him or hate him. I don't care about him when I'm watching a movie, you fucks. Now to number one. Annihilation. This is a weird freaking movie. It does have Natalie Portman, and I love her. But... This movie's bad. It's weird. You got it. Four women, scientists, all women, of course. That's fine. Fair enough. I'm not going to judge, okay, yet. They're going into this, they're entering into this like trippy force field that's called the Shimmer. And it shows up on the earth and it surrounds like a lighthouse. The military's already gone in and nobody comes out except for Natalie Portman's husband. Did come out, but now he's acting all weird. So these four ladies get to go in and see what's up. I guess. So you watch it and it's kind of weird because it happens really fast. Next thing you know, they're just walking in there. They showed their little base outside and it was just them four ladies, like no bosses, no government or military personnel involved, no president, nobody out there, like you no know, nothing, just these four hardcore women, like something doesn't feel right. Not because they're women, but because where's the operation? The world is at risk here. These four women are just like rogue here going into the thing, like really? So one second, Natalie Portman talking to her husband who just came out of the shimmer and boom, next minute, these four girls, including her, somehow she got on the team just because she's like, I got to find out what happened. My husband, I got to find out. I'm going in too. Okay, you're going in too. That's not how it works, but whatever. It happens super fast. Not sure what they're trying to accomplish other than go in and see what's up. They go in there. I guess it's a little intriguing for a few minutes, but it ends up being very boring, very weird, and everything that did happen in there was a ripoff of another film, except not as good. Not scary. I don't care about the characters. Even though it does try to give the characters each like their own little baggage and their reasons for going in there and what they're dealing with, that's not realistic either. Like, they'd be dealing with the mission. They'd be professionals dealing with the mission. That's what I want to see. What's up with this shimmer? Let's get to that. But no, they try to give them all a little arc. But it happens too fast. There's not enough. I don't care about them. There wasn't much discussion about the shimmer. Like, what's going on here? There wasn't any prep. They just went in. And I just don't like it. It was crap. And it was weird, too. Really, way too weird. And you could even say it's a bit SJW because of the fact that they went out of their way to make sure there was no other man or woman, by the way, with any kind of authority other than those four. There's no no one else in any leadership role, no one else involved to handle this mission or to be to look over this mission or to help plan this mission it doesn't make sense in this world in the world that we live in there would be men and women and lots of people involved in dealing with this shimmer so the movie sucked it ends with some bizarre inexplicable scene that maybe is supposed to be vague and open-ended and so we say wow brilliant way over my head well if it's way over my head then i don't get it and it just sucks so i don't think it's way over my head i think it's just dumb way out there the movie sucked. Thank you all for watching. Appreciate you all so much. And my top five favorite movies will be coming next. Y'all have a fantastic day. Like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the links below and I'll see you later. Crazy crab. Gone.